epic giant robot battles, Pokemon Go is now available for your smartphone, and iOS 10 beta is now available. That's what I like. Hello and welcome back to That's What I Like, a weekly series that I do where I talk about all of the fun science, tech, VR, transportation, whatever things I find on the internet that I like. And to start things off, as I mentioned in the intro there, a little while back, a team from the US and a team from Japan announced that they were working on giant mecha robots. The things of legend, the things from anime, wow. And an article came out on CNET this week talking about how this is actually gonna happen. They're building these robots, they're coming to completion, they showed off a bunch of the weaponry, weaponry, meaning things with BBs and water cannons and, and non-lethal things, obviously. They don't want to build these things to be super lethal, but they weigh like eight to 10,000 pounds a piece. One of them has to go on tank treads, for crying out loud. And apparently, like I said, this is actually gonna happen. There's going to be a giant robot battle, the first of its kind. Non-deadly, non-lethal, as long as nobody's in the way and one happens to fall over. I did not see anything on the CNET article about the date, but definitely make sure to go check it out. Loads of excellent pictures, and it shows off all the weaponry and the design and everything. Just so cool, very futuristic. Nowhere near what you would expect from anime, but you gotta start somewhere, right? Again, as I mentioned in the intro, Pokemon Go is now available for both iOS and Android in the US, in New Zealand, and a bunch of other places. US was actually one of the last places to receive it. I don't think it's available absolutely everywhere yet, but if it's not available where you are, from what I understand, you can download the APK if you're on Android and sideload it, and it probably is gonna work. I've played it a, a little bit. It's not as if I have the tablet sitting here beside me running it all the time or anything to let me know if there's any wild Pokemon in the area. I found that it's an amazingly fun game to play when I'm out walking and running, specifically when I go out for a run, because it gives me a chance to take a little break every now and again and catch a wild Pokemon, or go to one of the Pokestops the local parks or churches or schools or whatever and pick up spare items and stuff. Very, very much like the Ingress game if you've not played that game excellent game, but it involves you actually getting up and moving. So check it out if you're a Pokemon fan. I'm not, and I'm still checking it out because I think it's fun. Now, as I mentioned in a video a few weeks back, Fruit Ninja VR, it's now a thing. And actually, as of this week, as of like yesterday, yeah, yesterday, it's now live, it's public, it's available. It's gonna be 15 bucks on Steam, but right now, up until I think July 14th, July 12th or July 14th, cannot remember which, it's 11.99 and I may or may not have picked up a copy. I had to recalibrate my whole VR setup. I had to have something to test with. We'll call it that. So much fun, made me very, very sweaty. Definitely check it out if you have the vibe. Now, as we mentioned in last week's video, Amazon Prime Day is coming up here in a few days, January, July 12th to be exact. And every day up until the 12th, Amazon is doing these daily deals. And actually to go along with that, Amazon has implemented Alexa only deals. So you have to have an Alexa device, meaning the Echo, Echo Tap, Echo Dot, possibly even one of the Fire TV or Fire TV stick devices. And you go to the Alexa-based device and you say, Alexa order blah blah blah. And if you do that between now and the 12th, it'll take $10 off your first order doing it. Any order over $20. And what's more, from what I've read, it actually looks like it will work on every Echo device you have. So for example, I have the Echo and the Echo Dot, that's two $10 orders that I get, meaning $10 off $20 twice. And I have a handful of the Fire TV sticks, so if it works on those two, awesome. But definitely check it out, see if there's anything out there that you just desperately cannot live without, and if you have an Alexa device, make sure to use that to order. Amazon Echo was also updated. Up to this point, if you asked them to play music back, it would just play from Amazon Prime Music. If you wanted it to play back from something like Spotify or Pandora, you'd have to link up your account, of course, but then you'd also have to say, play blah on Pandora, or play blah on Spotify, and apparently, as of this week, they've changed it so that you can use Pandora or Spotify as the default music source. So you can just say, play blah, and it will go to whatever station on Pandora or whatever station on Spotify. Very, very cool. For the people that don't necessarily like Amazon Prime Music, or they've got a very large established set of stations or something on Pandora. I, I happen to do that. But moving right along, as of this week, the macOS and iOS 10 public betas are available. So if you really want to just go ahead and update your device and potentially have things break, go for it. If not, there are plenty of tech sites out there that are gonna be taking a look at them. There are a couple of articles out there I'm gonna go ahead and link to if you wanna see it. Moving right along though, Samsung has unveiled their brand new micro SD cards. They're the world's first UFS memory cards and they are just supposed to be ridiculously fast. Something like 500 megabytes per second read and 250 megabytes per second write? No, 530 megabytes per second read, 170 megabytes per second write. Which is still a whole lot faster than you're gonna see on any other micro SD cards on the market. I haven't actually seen the pricing or availability or anything, but they say that they've launched them so they should become available like now-ish. I, I just am curious to see what the pricing is gonna be on that because the article over on Engadget does not mention that. From an article on The Verge, we've talked, I think in the past, we talked about the new Nvidia cards, the 1070 and 1080. Up 
till now, a lot of the new higher end NVIDIA cards have been ridiculously large, but apparently Gigabyte has decided not to do that. The Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1070 ITX edition is actually only 6.7 inches long. And actually CNET says that it's 50 megahertz higher than the other longer cards of the 1070 series. So realistically, that's not bad. If you're looking to build a teeny tiny machine for VR and gaming and whatnot, because I've heard a lot of people are doing that lately. Now you've got a pretty decent option. And moving on, a while back I talked about the Neptune Pine. That was something I saw at CES. I was actually gonna back them on Kickstarter and I ended up backing out of it and kind of glad that I did because it was kind of a big honking watch. There was another Indiegogo campaign they did about this whole hub of devices, a whole suite of things. And apparently as of this week, there's an animated image that's come out showing their progress. And their progress is essentially, here are two tablets Here's what happens when you press something on one and it happens on the other and that it's very, very limited the amount of stuff they can do. The, the Verge title says, it shows that they're like 1% of the way there. Again, kind of glad I didn't invest in it. The whole idea behind Neptune Pine, their whole concept is just amazing. Having a pocket screen and then having everything else be interactive with that, I think it's great. Linking everything together, you know? But they just don't seem to be able to get it right. I'm thinking the tech is just not quite there yet. Still, nice to see that there is progress being made. It's just kind of a pity that it's not much, much more progress. In some Google news, Google updated Google Now on tap this week. They added in the ability to translate text from any screen on your device. There's a new discover mode that takes what's on your screen and just gives you a whole browsable series of content related to what's on the screen. Helps you find new things based on what you're already looking at. And the camera is now going to have Now on tap powers. Although by reading about it here, it says you open the camera, you hover over a barcode or a QR code, you fire up Now on tap and it learns more about the item. There are already a buttload of apps out there that will do this, so it's it's nice to have it built into it, but it's nothing brand new and exciting there. Still, nice to see them continuing to work on it, continuing to add new features. Google has also updated their self-driving cars. They've added in the ability for the car to read what a cyclist, a bicyclist, their hand signals. Definitely nice for safety, definitely nice for not killing bicyclists with self-driving cars, to be able to know that, you know, I'm going to turn, blah, 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 and I'm going to stop, and cool stuff. Good job, Google. And finally, this is normally, that's what I like, the things that I like that I want to talk about. There's one story I've got to talk about though that I don't like so much, tech related. The Consumer Product Safety Commission has recalled 501,000 hoverboards. Swagways, whatever you want to call them, the airboards. I made a video about one a while back and I, I'm not entirely sure if mine was recalled or not. It hasn't caught on fire yet and it does still work, but if you do own one of these, you may want to go ahead and check out the article, check out the recall notification list to see if yours is on there. But you know what? I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up there for today. Thank you guys as always for supporting this series. Links to everything that I talked about can be found down in the video description as usual. Remember to leave a thumbs up down below the video if you liked it. It definitely lets me know that you like the series, like what I'm doing here, and I do appreciate that. Subscribe to receive more of my videos when they become available, and I will see you again next time.